<clears throat> what up, everybody? Welcome back to Henshin Gate. We are the YouTubers with Attitude. I am Jared. And I am Mike. And today we have a special guest for our interview with uh, Henshin Talk. You know him from Power Rangers, Mega Force, Jungle Fury, Mr. Force. Man is prolific as hell. Uh, one of my favorite shows, Xena, as well. But I'm a, I'm a nerd about that later. Um, Mr. Jeffrey Dolan. Hey, everybody. How are you? Nice to know. Nice to see you all. Yeah. Uh, guys, make sure you go follow all of your social media. And make sure you give this video a like, share, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon. You know if I post my videos, you know, follow all of our social media and Twitch. Basically, love us because we love you. You got it. Yeah, do this for three years. And uh, big, first, big shout out to Morphin Network for just helping us out with this. Yeah, yeah thanks. Great for it. It. And uh, Mike, I'm going to let you handle it from here. Uh, again, first off, Thank you so much for taking the time out to do this interview. Yeah, I, I messed up the time. I, I forgot our country went um, there. I'm saving in the weekend. <laughs> I've been um, sitting here like, whoa, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, first off, uh, like I said, I wanted to thank you so much for taking the time out to do this interview. And because I know you have like a busy schedule. Yeah, I wish it was busier. COVID, COVID sort of put the. Uh, the kibosh on uh, the busyness of my schedule at the moment, so I'm I'm, uh, I, I'm lucky to have a bit more free time to chat with you guys and play. Yeah. Um. First off, my my question is, um, my first question is, what what was your who was your inspiration growing up when it came to um uh, acting or or the performing um, arts. I, I, I've got to be honest and say my, my inspiration was my grandmother. Um, uh, she was a, a feisty lady who uh, sort of uh, railed against uh, tradition. And, um, you yeah, know, she grew up in a time of a uh, very prim and proper way ladies should be. Um, but she always wanted to be a performer herself. Um, and unfortunately, um, it sort of uh, uh, tradition and my grandfather sort of um, stifled that a little bit. Uh, he didn't think it was right for a lady to be out on the stage and performing and things like that. He, he was one of those gentlemen of uh, that upbringing. Um, not to say he was a bad person at all. He was a, he was a, an awesome person, but he just had his, his, his thoughts on tradition. And um, yeah, and so it stifled my grandmother. So, But she still managed to get out and get involved with some performance groups. And I used to go along and watch her. And I just thought it was amazing. I just And, and she used to sing wandering around the house, as did my grandfather on The Secret. He used to privately, he'd wander around and when I stay with them, um, I, I'd be in up, upstairs in the, my, my bedroom and he'd be wandering around downstairs thinking everyone was asleep and he'd be singing away to himself. He had this brilliant bass voice and he'd, he'd be wandering around the house singing these sort of operatic uh, tunes to himself thinking no one could hear. And I would just upstairs go, wow, that's just amazing. Um, and then the same thing with my nana, as I say, when she got on stage, it was just like, it was a revelation watching and going, that looks like she's having so much fun. She's That's the real Nana that I love. And and so, yeah, she was a real inspiration. She came to all my early shows um, and I loved the feedback I got from her. And uh, and I, I like to think that I, because of me getting on stage, she was able to live slightly vicariously through me as well and uh, and and enjoy some of the, maybe the, some of the uh, aspect of life that, <clears throat> excuse me, that she missed out on a little bit because she was held back. Yeah. Definitely, um, cause like uh, I actually sing a little bit too. I sung uh, in the chorus in middle school as well. Right, good. No, I think everyone can sing. Uh, my 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 attitude was singing. People get up there and they hear me sing, and they go, "Oh, you know, no no one can do like that." You know, no. no and actually, it's the opposite. If I sing, it tends to inspire people to sing. Um, and I believe people can sing if they, as long as they sing from the heart, um, and 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 put their commitment into what they're singing about. Um, that's singing. It doesn't matter how it sounds. Um, it's just when people get up on stage and scream for the sake of screaming and want to sound like a rock star, that that that'd always be like, no, that, that's not good. But if someone gets up and just gives a full effort, if they're singing a, a hymn or they're singing a song at a funeral or they just want to get up and let out at a karaoke, um, as long as they're really committing to it and enjoying it, then I'm right behind it. And how it sounds is unimportant. I agree with you 100%. Um... My second question is, um, this is a power rental related question. Yep. How, how did you land the role of the voice of Korag? 
Um, we just threw an uh, audition process as, as most of our roles are. I actually had a couple of auditions last week for some more voices upcoming. Um, <clears throat> haven't heard anything back yet, so, but you don't, you just don't worry about them. You go and do the auditions and walk away. Um, and when I auditioned for Corag, they don't let you know how large the part's going to be. Um, so, so you're sort of just going in thinking it's another generic voice or it's another character voice that's going forward. I am so sorry. Sorry, uh, you were breaking up. Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so you you don't you don't get told how large the part within the context of the show is going to be. So you you generally just go and do your audition, giving it your best effort for whatever the character might be, however you want to express it. Um, and you find out later on uh, whether yeah you know, the, the size of it. Then so Corag was a big surprise. Am I having sound issues, or are you having sound issues? I apologize. Um, things are acting weird over here on the uh, yeah, east coast. Of the, cool. uh, um, um, when it comes to the audition process, yeah. Um, what what exactly do you do to get yourself ready? <clears throat> uh, well, you're. Hang on, I've got a large fly just interfering with me. <laughs> uh, you're um. <laughs> Your uh, your agent sends you the briefing documents on the on the show and on the characters, mm -hmm. and and the script that you're going to be auditioning with. And generally, the script is only a half a page of dialogue. Uh, that's a, it gives you enough time to demonstrate the vocal character, mm -hmm. um, and it's basically have a read, have a think, have a play around with it yourself. And then when you get in the studio, um, whoever's uh, operating the, uh, the console, uh, the director that's there, generally Jim McClarty uh, or Laurie Dungy is uh, coming back on board this year, I believe. Um, they will give you guidance as to what they've been told as well through production. Um, and But they pretty much in the audition process, they let you decide how you want to um, uh, portray the character. And they will just make sure that you're... Um, uh, hitting your accent points properly, um, a, a pronunciation of certain words. Like we, you know, we, when we speak, we say mirror when we're talking about looking in a mirror. Where as opposed to American accent, it's more a mirror. And uh, and it's so they, they, they help you out with that. Um, I had a, during the core egg time, I had a, <laughs> or was it Gose? It might be Gose actually. Um, I, I, I had a huge issue with saying Armada. Um, I couldn't get the pronunciation <laughs> accurate. And Jim and I used to sit in the studio, and and he would um no Jeff, it's not a, a martyr, it's a martyr, and I I'd, th I'd say but I'm saying that, and he goes no you're not, and I go yes I am, and we'd end up having an argument, and I go why can't they just put fleet, and uh, that would, he'd go I know I know that's better, but they want a martyr, so say a martyr, so yes, so that's that's where you get the assistance there. The directors are really helpful in that way of keeping you on track, um, pronunciation strong, um, but also giving character advice too from knowing. Uh, having had closer discussions with the producers and the directors as to what they are wanting. Uh, okay. Um, th thank you for that. Um, now, this is a, and I, I know you were on uh, Xeno Warrior Princess for a brief time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was it like actually on, on the set of Xeno Warrior Princess? I, I only did one episode of the of Xena. I did about six of Hercules. Um, uh, but the episode I did of Xena was uh, one of one of the fun ones. It was a sort of a musical um, uh, sort of situation as well, I think. And the the atmosphere on those sets once after a couple of years, once things got really established and people got really comfortable uh, with what the production process was, the um, the expectation from the American producers, uh, we we ended up having a lot of fun on it because. Um, yeah, guys actually stepped back. So um, Rob Tappert and stuff actually stepped back and let a lot of New Zealanders take control. Um, Michael Hurst, who played Eolus, um, ended up directing quite a lot of the production um, in the end. And I was lucky enough to be in a, quite a few of Michael's uh, shows. So on set, we, we had a great time because we were really comfortable. We'd, we'd worked on stage in, in Auckland and around the country together. Um, and we had this good re relationship and many people do you know it's a small industry in New Zealand so the professionals here work together quite a lot in various uh, modes and so you become very comfortable with each other's style and uh, and humor 
uh, and work ethic. And so, yeah, that, that, that Xena Hercules, uh, that Xena episode particularly was was great fun, um, and, and because Michael just sort of took it in a way that uh, made it uh, quite um, free, and you were able to express your character quite. And if and if he had an issue, he'd come and never talk to you. And, yeah, okay, cool, cool. Let's sort that out. And yeah, no, but I, I really, you know, th those two series, Hercules and Xena together, the ones I did, we we just had the best time on them because they were just such out there sort of storylines and fight sequences and characters that uh, made, made it great fun. <laughs> um, I, I know I know a lot of people, a lot of the Power Ranger um, fan base has been asking about this. Why why wasn't it explained why the, why the <laughs> black Megaport Ranger went from black yeah. to green? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a simple explanation for that. Um, <laughs> It just you don't need to know about it right now. Um, <laughs> just trust me, I'm ghost -like. Um Yeah, uh, exactly. I <laughs> there's 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 several circumstances in um, in shows over the years uh, where sometimes you just have to say something to wrap it up, um, and otherwise the explanation uh, could create too many issues, uh, or it, it's a nice writing point to be fair to get you guys talking because. It is something that you guys talk about a lot. <laughs> I got asked about this question in the last interview. <laughs> yeah, hey, look, doing that has created a whole a whole channel of conversation in the, in this fandom, which is I think is hilarious. Um, and it's a, and it's a great question. What what why, why did they do that? I I don't know because they never explained it to me either. <laughs> <laughs> um. Also, um. Would if you had a chance to um work with any any actor or actress yep. in any um in any franchise, who would it be? Any franchise. Um do we include the Tarantino franchise within this? I'd love to work with Uma Thurman, um, but that's just for personal reasons. Um franchise side of things. I think um, I think Hugh Jackman in the in uh, in, in the X Men franchise I thought was a he he created a great development of that character through to its uh, final um, iteration and I, and I thought that was really cool because he, he took a, he took basically what was a cartoon character and really humanized it really strongly um, and I'd love mm -hmm. to work with him like that you know um, the female characters I think get under. Um, rated and also underwritten, and so yeah, it's it's. I don't think they get a fair crack at, at things. And but but I also love what um, what Robert Downey Jr. has done with with the, with the Tony Stark character too. What he did, uh, you know, because again, that was a, a character that could have so easily just become this um, smash him and blast him sort of rich guy. Whereas he really again took took the character to a different level, and uh, and you know you saw his humanity in situations and you saw his pain and you saw his loss. Um, so again, another strong and, and, and but again, you, you look at the black widows and stuff. I, the, she's got the movie coming out. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. We haven't seen it here yet. Um, and I'd look, and it looks like a huge female cast, which is great. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they develop her character. And I hope they don't do her the discourtesy of, Sort of dumbing it down, or or, or now not letting it have the tough decisions. So yeah, it's. I think that's where I think where the, those franchise characters really come in strong is is giving them the opportunity to really challenge themselves and and not just play the superhero, but play the the person. Um, uh, and if that's done really well, then I think that takes the franchise movies to another level. Okay. Um, I have a few more questions. Um, if no you problem. can give, if you can give advice to any up-and-coming uh, actor or actress singer performer yep. entertainer what, yep. what would that advice be um <clears throat> uh, we have a saying here goes uh, have your fingers and plenty of pies uh, have have plenty of strings to your bow um i know the american system does that very well actually you, know, you, you get surprised quite regularly when you watch production productions that of you look at the franchise uh, actors, you know, and you think th you think of them as just these superhero muscle muscle bound guys, but all of a sudden you'll see them in 
something a bit uh, off mainstream and they're playing piano or they're playing a guitar or they're singing or they're dancing. Um, and and it's I think that is the strength of the American training system is they, they get you to learn a range of skills. And I think that's an important part of a performer because if you just pigeonhole yourself as I'm just going to be a comedian or I'm just going to be a dra dramatic actor, or I'm just going to be a stage actor, then you really limit your uh, in income potentials and earning channels. So really work on your voice. Yeah, go and see a really good voice coach that helps you strengthen your vo vocal abilities. And that's different from a singing coach. Get a different singing coach as well. Singing coaches, it's a different thing. It's a different way. Um, there are different techniques about using your voice for singing as opposed to talking. Uh, sound, sounds very strange, but it's true. Um, really, it's, it's probably a thing I... Uh, have, have, have lapsed on is the dancing side of things. I'm not. I'm not a very confident or good dancer. I can waltz. I can do other bits and pieces, and I can follow steps if I get challenged to. But at my age now, now I can luckily say I don't want to do that, and uh, and they won't make me. Um, but yeah, so really at, at, at a young age, go and get a really good dance teacher, you know, choreographer, instructor uh, to to learn those skills. Um, improvisation really important. Go and find a really good improvisation. In your area. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh, no, no. Are, you having, are you having problems again, Michael? <sighs> okay. We back, are we? Whoops. You got I'm there. Uh, that, nope. uh, that, that tends to happen a lot. Okay, bugger. That's right. Yeah. You guys, you got I think technical, technical difficulties are Emma, but he'll be he'll be back. So do oh, cool. you picking most of that up, Jared, or um, uh, oh, there he is. There he is. Are you uh, out there, Mike? Yeah, my my stuff went out, but um, I, my question, my I know this is um, my 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 question was um, if you can uh, I know this is for the fans. If you can do a little snippet of Korag. Korag. Um, <clears throat> is there anything particularly? I mean, shall I read the news or something? You <laughs> know. <laughs> Let me get today's headlines. Uh, let me get a world headline for you and see what I can come up with. Um, where are we? Well, oops, go away. Yeah, I've got my iPad working in front of me. Whoop. Yeah, New Zealand, we don't want that. We don't want that. Where's that. Where's the world? World, there's world. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Korag the Night Wolf. Read you the news headlines. For you as workers still mulling, one thing is clear. That debate didn't help. The headlines from Cora. <laughs> Absolutely <Awesome>. brilliant. <laughs> oh good. Do you want me to re do you want me to re-answer that last question, Michael? You were asking about training, etc. Did you not pick that uh, up? Uh yes, please. Okay, cool. So basically the string, the string of Michael asked a question earlier before we had some technical difficulties about what you should do to improve yourself and how you can help become a bigger, better actor. Uh, and the basic of it is, is get as many strings to your bow as you can. Um, really work on your voice. Uh, get a decent voice teacher. Get a decent singing teacher. Singing and talking, two very different things. You use different parts of your vocal cords. Um, dance. Get a good dance teacher. Learn to dance. I'm not very good at that side of things. Improvisation. That's one of the things I would really encourage people to do. Go and join the improv group in your area, community, city. Um, just Google improv classes in, in your, your local area and you'll get stuff will come up. Um, if you're lucky enough to be in LA, go and see the, the LA theater sports guys. Um, go and see Bats in, 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 in Bay Area and in, in San Fran. Um, if you're in Canada, wherever you are, New York, there's some great opportunities in New York. So yeah, just we're we're actually in New York City. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I referenced into it. So I don't. Who, who do I know? Okay. So Michael Durkin is, a, is an improv friend of mine uh, in New York. Uh, he was part of an improv community. I was involved with the ITI, which is the International Theatre Sports Institute. So theatre sports is a Keith Johnson, a Canadian gentleman, created this this tech, uh, this genre called theatre sports. A couple of teams competing each against each other. You're given a genre or a game or a poem or an interview. Think whose line is it anyway on the TV? That oh. is basically. That is basically improvisational theatre sports taken to a different sort of style. Uh, usually, rather than just having four guys on stage making stuff up, it's usually two teams competing each other 
and doing arms interviews and creating songs and creating Shakespearean scenes or doing party mystery guest sort of things. So it's a really strong way of helping you be able to think on your feet and cope with a situation on stage, TV, film, where if things don't go quite right, you're strong enough in your character and your um, ability to be comfortable in the environment that you, you'll be able to roll through it. Um, and, and, you know, think up of something, you know, something will come to you that you'll be able to bang in and improvise into a scene that might be able to be used or keep the scene flowing at least. Um, yeah, so those are sort of the main things. Train, you know, get out there and train. Um, and, and talk to other people practitioners sit down you know, if you meet someone if you're lucky enough to know somebody get in touch with them say if you got a chance to have a chat i'd like to pick your brain about how do i do this i work on stage occasionally what's what's something i can do to help my stage presence or technique or vocal um, strength to help me get my my dialogue across because i'm hearing from people that can't hear me up the back row you know so yeah they're just all those sorts of things you know really utilize anything around you and you've got to be quite um I wouldn't say brash. You've just you've just got to be confident in yourself that and respectful that you can go and talk to someone and not make it all about you. Just sit and listen and listen to their stories and then pick what works for you. Because not everything you get told is going to work for each individual. Because it might not suit your style, it might not suit your beliefs, it might not suit, suit the training you've already done. So take what you find useful and then move forward with that and, and discard the stuff that you go, that doesn't quite work for me. And they won't worry about whether you use everything. They're not going to follow you around and make sure you do everything that they told you. But, yeah, every little bit helps. <coughs> oh, I'm in a very my- renovations in my house at the moment. We've got a lot of dust in the house and I'm, I'm very dry. No problem. Uh, my, uh, my second to last question is, if you had a chance uh, after the uh, after uh, COVID nineteen and everything else is hopefully over and done with, it, and the convention are open again, mm. would you would you want to actually meet the fans? Well, oh, heck yeah, yeah, no, I'd love to. Um, uh, I've already been in contact with a few uh, groups that have done a few of the earlier interviews and met up with a few uh, people via them, via Ryan, etc., who um, have asked me the same question, and I'd be very keen to come over. I just have to make sure that things are safe, though. Um, uh, despite what um, your mighty leader might say, um, <laughs> you know, we don't we don't trust him. So um, uh, as much as he wants to get the economy flowing, and there's nothing wrong with that, it's got to be done in a way that I feel safe. And uh, so I'm not going to just burst over as soon as the borders open. Unfortunately, I'm asthmatic, so I'm sort of uh, health compromised. I'm immune compromised in that way, and so it's dan- it could be dangerous for me to come bowling in as soon as things are able to. And there's still a, a really large uh, potential for uh, for risk for my health. Um, but, yeah, w- once things are proven to be a lot more safe and, and people are behaving in a way that um, I feel comfortable in, uh, you know, um, the, your whole attitude over there about masks and, and, and sanitising and and conspiracy theories about it actually being real, um, yeah, it's, it is it is very concerning. So, um, uh, yeah, for, for me, yeah, I'm dead keen to come over. Uh, it just has to be under the, the right, um, right environment. Definitely. Uh, again, I'm terribly sorry about the technical difficulties. All right, no problem. And um, I want to thank you again for yeah. taking the time out to do this interview. I also want to give a shout out to Ryan from Morphin Network for helping us yeah. with this interview. Ah, uh, oh, there we go. Oh, oh Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, uh, Ryan, uh, I don't know if people see that. You probably can see it. Um, Ryan is just asked about uh, so Thor talks. Um, so I'm still doing some at the moment. I've got, I've got actually why I'm still a bit like this. I, I grew this in for a, um, a a couple of commercials that required it uh, that I was auditioning for, and I was about to shave it off. But I'm going to keep it because this afternoon I'm going to go out and re- record a few more of my Derek's Thor talks. So um, uh, Derek is a character I played on a New Zealand TV series called The Almighty Johnsons. Uh, and you can reference that on Google, et cetera. Um, and uh, the, the premise of it was that there was four brothers who had descended from the Norse gods and had retained small portions of the power. So one was a poet, the other one was a, uh, a, a, an expert at games. And of course, one of the characters was Odin. So he was the all father of all Norse abilities. Uh, I played Derek, who was a, um, a, a slightly um, crazy goat farmer 
who turned out to be uh, the descendant of Thor. Uh, and Thor was a bit crazy, but nuts. And so I had a great time with that. Uh, out of that, I decided with uh, when, when COVID hit that I would uh, have a bit of fun with Derek and create Derek's Thor Talks. So I took advantage of the TED Talks uh, logo and got a friend to animate up a Derek's and crossing out the ED Thor Talks. And I've been doing uh, life, life, Life's View via Derek. Um, and these are just topics that would come to mind. You know, Mr. Trump certainly featured in one or two. Um, people's attitude about COVID featured in a couple. Um, uh, playing golf during COVID restrictions inside. Uh, you know, drinking too much during COVID. Um, COVID sex. That was a bit weird, that one. Uh, yeah, so I've done a whole series. And they're on YouTube. So if you want to go and check them out, find me, Jeffrey Dolan, on YouTube. And there's a whole series of... Uh, you know, whole series of uh, clips on there. Um, uh, I've done about 60 or 70 of them now, so you can go and have a Google. They're only about 90 seconds to three minutes long. And, um, yeah, just a, a bit of fun to, to pass my time during COVID uh, when we had nothing to do. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna hit up a mountain, actually, this afternoon and film a few more this afternoon, and then I'm going to uh, shave the beard off because I don't usually have a beard. <clears throat> well, what was your favourite character to voice, to voice over within the Power Rangers series? So, I mean, my favourite character was was Korag because it was um, the, uh, it was a, a baddie, and baddies are good fun to play. Um, it was the most uh, physically straining though, as well, because it was very hard on the voice. Um, whereas Gose was a bit more of a rewarding character from the fact that um, with 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 Korag, I would spend five hours of my five hours in the studio, and and. And probably four hours of that was just doing the fight sequences. So very full on, all this sort of stuff, you know. <clears throat> and even just doing that, rasped the voice. Um, whereas Gose was just this sort of laid back California surfer sort of guy. And, and I was only in the studio for, I think the maximum was an hour. So um, so that was a, it was a pleasant character because he didn't fight. So um uh, made a, a, a bit more of a pleasant journey for me as a performer, um, but and also, also because yeah, to be a guide to people is is kind of rewarding as well. Uh, so it was a kind of a nice counterpoint to the the ferocity and nastiness of Korag to the the leadership and and calmness of Gose. And I'm pretty sure some of the people some of the people in the Ranger community know know this, but or don't know this. But I believe you also um, voiced Daishi. I did do Daishi. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, look, it's it's quite funny, Michael. We, we uh, I've mentioned that in quite a few interviews. We don't get the show here. Um, it doesn't play in New Zealand. Um, so I forget what parts I've done because we, I've never seen it. Um, so I, I've never been able – when, when I do a, a role on a show, I get the lines that I have to say within the show. I don't see the script of the whole show. I don't see the storyline. So I don't know how all this fits together. <laughs> so, um, um, so yeah, so yeah, so these characters I've done over the years, I get reminded about them, and I have to go back and watch a YouTube clip to go, oh yeah, how did I sound for that one? Um, because yeah, you know, they, they were filmed quite a long time ago, to be honest. Um, you know, Korag's ten years now, I think. Um, Daishi was earlier than that, I think. So, um, yeah, when someone mentioned that, the way it's like, wow, okay, because I've been doing I've been doing roles and characters in the show since two thousand two, two thousand three. I think we filmed the one that is on my IMDb link is, is 2003. I think we filmed that in 2002. Uh, that was an acting role, but then the voices started coming through. So, you know, I've been, I've been involved a long time with it. So, you know, I'm, I'm really, I feel bad that I can't recall them because I know the fans are so uh, committed to the show and, and, and really uh, and love the characters. Um, but as I say, we don't have a context to judge it by because we don't see it here. So I don't get to keep up with the flow of the story. Yeah. Um. One more question. Uh. Yep. One more question was uh, what was your uh from uh one of from uh YouTuber from YouTube named Jay Gonzalez uh what was your favorite memory while filming your uh while filming Zena? Oh, while filming Zena, <clears throat> um, I got to work with a a, a lot of um really really good New Zealand actors. You know, they 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 really. The actors that we used here were, were good character actors, and so I uh, had lots of an interaction with a, a great bunch of, um, uh, of people. But I suppose, I suppose the 
the most fun or I mean whenever you get the chance to ride and and, and have a, a sword fight uh, with either Xena or Hercules uh, that's you, you can't beat that you never fight the choreography <laughs> and, and that just that giving it all and having a bit of fun and you know and and you know coming up against six foot six but Kevin Sorbo can be a bit terrifying too um because he's quite um you know well put together but then the same can be said of Lucy Lawless when she comes screaming at you like a banshee as Xena. It's a it's a it's a terrifying uh, prospect. So uh, <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> oh, man. Um. Bro. Uh, another question is, what is what is, what was it like to play as Korag is saying the spells and calling the mega words? Say again, sorry, I missed that. Um, what what what, it, what was it like to play as Korag and saying the spells and calling the mega Ah, oh, okay. Um, well, look, it's um, part, it's, look, it's, it's great fun doing it. Yeah, Korag was a, 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 a as I say, he's probably one of them. From what I've been following and reading up on, people think he was the quintessential baddie of the show so far, and that's a real. You know, I, I take that as a great um, 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 honor that people think that, and I hope that how I portrayed the voice helped that as well as what the directors and the and the producers did and the writers. Um, and so, as such, I mean that was. Part of the, the 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 beef, the meat of the characters was was those uh, either inspirational spells or castings or or, or or sayings that they came up with that the writers created. That you knew this was the time that you know this is this is Korag stomping his foot and putting his sword in the ground and going, you know, you're not going to get past me, and this is going down, and so uh, here here it comes, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the the the, the wrath of all of my might uh, down upon you. Um, so that's a it's a pretty empowering sort of uh, thing to be able to do, uh, and then watching the graphics afterwards because what would happen was, as I say, we'd get the script of the bits that we were doing, and then they would show us the graphic. They'd show us what had been filmed. Uh, it was all, it's all filmed beforehand, and and you'd go, oh, okay, now I get the sense of where this is going and what we're doing, and so you, that, that would bring the the gravitas to your voice and and the, and the importance to the moment and how you presented it. So yeah, no, it was it was it was good fun, great fun. Definitely. Again, um, thank you for taking the time out to um, do this interview. And again, shout out to Ryan and all of you guys at Morphin Network. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, good stuff, guys. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you for taking the time and uh, hope you enjoy your brisk walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm actually going to go marathon Hercules because I have most of the DVDs right now. So I'm going to go look for those specific episodes that you're in. Of which, of the Almighty uh, Jungle? Of Hercules. Uh, oh, yeah. The whole yeah. set of Hercules cool. DVDs. Yeah, go cool. um, well, I'm actually, actually in the my So this is, uh, I'm li living back at my friend's house. So uh, uh, Kevin Smith, who uh, played Ares in the series of Hercules. Oh, yeah. My mom was just talking about him earlier. He's like, oh, he made a fine Ares. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm back living with uh, his family um, and uh, his wife and new partner, and, and his, that was his son that just wandered through the back of shot before. <laughs> so yeah, we've we've remained close, close friends since Kevin's passing. So yeah. Well, we send them our best. You know, yeah. Hope we get through this. Yeah, well, I'll go to New York sometime when when things are safe. I was there five years ago, um, and uh, had a had a great time, and didn't see anywhere near enough in the ten days I was there. So. I need to come back for a bit longer and be able to see a bit more of the, uh, the site. Oh, yeah. There's a whole lot to see out here. Definitely. Yeah. I want to, I, and I want, I want to, I want to see a, a, a Yankees game. You know, okay. <laughs> I, uh, I took my wife to her first Yankee game. She's, she's from Tampa, Florida. Oh, cool. Okay. Right. Yeah. I went to a, I went to a, um, when I go, I went and saw the A's play in, in Oakland when I was in San Francisco last year. Oh, you're an A's fan. No, unfortunately I'm not. A, I'm, a, I'm, <laughs> I'm a Giants fan, but, um, but uh, the Giants were away that week, so I just thought, well, I've got to go and see a baseball game. <laughs> yeah, so when I was last there, I went and saw a Giants game at, uh, at MetLife Stadium. And then uh, when I was in San Fran, I went and caught, caught the, uh, the A's playing. Unfortunately, I would have liked to have seen the 49ers, but um, again, it wasn't quite season. So, yeah. yeah. I'm a San Francisco-centered sports fan. Sorry, guys. So, uh, yeah. No, I, I, love, uh, I love all different sports teams. Uh, not, not just New York, but, you know, that's right. really 
So yeah, a uh, big thank you, Jeffrey. Thank Morph and I were setting this up and uh, go follow his um, Thor TED Talks. I was just watching one. Okay. It's, it's just amazing. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Uh, uh, you guys be safe and uh, yeah, uh, I wish you all well um, in these strange and wonderful times. I wish your families uh, stay safe and healthy. And, uh, and I look forward to maybe in the future once things have uh, settled down and, 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 and we're all feeling a bit safer that, to, to maybe meet you in person at a convention somewhere or something. Oh, yes, of course. Of course. Yes. Until then, I won't, I won't have a beard. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. This has been Henshin Talk, y'all. Until then, catch you guys later. Peace. Bye now.